Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another Mixed Methods Research Design. Today, we're going to be talking about concurrent transformative design, and that's a transformational design where you're hoping to lead towards societal change. If we think further about the overall purpose of this design, it's really to use research, as I said, to transform society, a group of people, to address the injustices um, that lie. It could be economic ones, it could be environmental, it could be um, um, uh, you know, society at large, it could be anything in between. And so the aim is really to try to provide the solution for that. It's not just to describe um, the problem at hand, which is commonplace, but it's really to lead towards change. If we think further about the components in this design, it can use exploratory, explanatory, or even nested designs. Um, so it's not sort of a lock stitch in structure, but it's, um, it's something different. We're gonna look at the uh, visual of that shortly. It's using both quant and qual, uh, and the data is collected concurrently or at the same time in this particular design. And it's really led by values. And so the values that underpin your epistemology, your axio axiology, um, your philosophy of, of education or of, a, of research, if you will, those are the things that are going to guide uh, the, the construct of the whole research design from the data collection uh, to, to your sampling methods, uh, to, the, to the data analysis itself, or even the conclusions, and hopefully the change that you eventually um, uh, work towards. It also is going to involve a call to action uh, on the back end so that the constituents and the audience with whom you're hoping to serve, uh, how are they going to get involved in this process as well? And finally, this again, this transformative lens is going to, to guide both the data collection and the analysis. So what does it look like? Here are two options. We have uh, an intermixed quantitative and qualitative where both are capitalized, meaning that they're given equal priority. And this goes again all the way across from the initial vision to advocacy and even the framework itself of the methods. A secondary option is where you might have uh, one of the two uh, methods of research collection, let's say in this case qualitative, that's going to be the overarching uh, area. And then within that uh, is going to be an assumed quantitative element of that. So again, if you, let's say you have 12 weeks of an intervention study and during that 12 weeks, you're going to do a small survey looking at something quantitatively. So that might be um, sort of a setup that you could use there. Again, the threading is unique because the overall integration involves this, let's say, social justice concept or environmental justice concept throughout the study. And so it's not just uh, using theory, let's say, to inform chapter one of your dissertation or chapter two of your literature review but to really inform the whole process, whether it be a dissertation, a research project, or just trying to lead to societal change in affiliation with a nonprofit, or just your own work. Some of the limitations include having a lack of structure because there's so many options and opportunities to utilize this transformative lens all the way across the board. So there's a lot of wiggle room. And also the same population with whom you're try, trying to serve and impact positively can actually actually have a negative impact. Let's say that you do a quasi-experimental study on um, uh, in an urban population of a high need school in, um, in, in New York City. And uh, the experimental uh, curricula um, that you embedded within math and, and literacy classes actually led to a negative outcome. And so sometimes you don't always get the uh, promising and, and positive impacts that you hope to have. And this is a definite limitation when you're hoping for that societal change, tra transforming that society in a good way actually could have a, a reverse effect. Another example here is if we have uh, Jeremy and Gina use this design for their ethnographic study of culturally responsive pedagogies in New York pu public schools, and they used a time diary to examine variations among these two schools in each borough related to the amount of time teachers spent teaching two students unique strengths, nurturing student achievement and promoting a sense of well-being, as opposed to just trying to fill in the gaps of their knowledge base or seeing things through more of a medical deficit model. The study was conducted uh, and guided by participatory 
ethnographic philosophy from James Bradley in terms of his participant observation methods. And the observations and reported activities were quantitatively analyzed for frequency. And then the informal conversations and focus groups were analyzed qualitatively before all the data was finally integrated and then interpreted afterwards. So those outcomes actually led to refined PD workshops for all teachers in these two schools. And the researchers shared those conclusions with the whole district in hopes that they might have more widespread change as a result of this ethnographic research study using the concurrent transformative design uh, mixed methods research. Again, if you have questions about this design or any other, feel free to reach out anytime. Here's my Twitter handle as well as my YouTube channel where you can learn more about mixed methods research. Take care and all the best.